That's the direction of tau. According to this picture, I would like tau to be some magnitude, and I need a unit vector now that agrees with that direction. So it has components in the x and y. The y component is how much? Cosine 30 degrees. And the x component is negative, because positive x is this way. x component is minus the sine of 30 degrees. So that is to say root 3 over 2 in the y minus 1 half in the x. So I already have the minus 1 half in the x here. So I therefore need to pick the ratio f1 over f2 so that I get the right component in the y direction. And I have a root 3 in the bottom. So I need a root 3 in the top. I'm sorry. Yeah, I need a root 3 in the top. So I'm going to have to multiply by 3. Agreed? There, all your work for nothing. OK? So in order to make the tree rotate around an axis that lies this way at 30 degrees from the y-axis, we need to combine the two forces to produce torques about the base of the tree that points in that direction. And that requires the ratio f1 over f2 is 3. Now I have a couple of questions for you that have been sponsored, actually. The first one is, <laughs> why can't I just add the two forces, f1 plus f2, and that will tell me the direction that the tree will fall in? What's that? Yeah, imagine that F1 were actually applied down at the base of the tree. Okay, then it's not going to tend to make it rotate at all about the base of the tree. So the effectiveness of F1 is, compared to F2, is compromised by the fact that it's not applied equally far away. So I can't just add the two forces and get a net resultant force and therefore say that's the direction that it will fall in. There was another question, which was, is the direction that we need the torque to point in just arbitrarily set by using a right-hand rule? And instead, if we use the left-hand rule, we would get well, what would we get? So if we, if we use the left-hand rule, then what would happen to the direction of the torque from F1? Go minus, right? It would go opposite. And what about the direction of the torque from F2? Same thing. So the net torque vector would now be pointing which way? It would point down and to the left, OK? But now we get to use our left hands and say, oh, cool. The tree is going to fall according to the fingers of my left hand, since I'm using the left hand rule very temporarily. And so that would get it to fall in the same direction, OK? So we need some way of breaking the ambiguity of picking. If this thing is rotating, I can't pick any vector in the plane and specify how that's rotating. Because I get all different vectors in the plane. So how do I prefer one to any of the others? The only direction that's singled out is the one that's orthogonal to the plane of rotation. And then we need a rule to break the one remaining ambiguity, which is, well, should that vector point towards you 
or away from you. And is it arbitrary what we picked? Yes. If we were majority left-handed, we'd probably have the left-hand rule. And in fact, Professor Sparks is a big fan of the left-hand version of the right-hand rule, which is very convenient if you're right-handed because you don't have to put your pencil down. But I'm not gonna go into that. Just put your pencil, yeah, put the clacker down and then <clears throat> use your right hand. <laughs>